Mother Nature can create stunning environments placed amongst the most ideal of backdrops. But let's face it, a lot of the time we end up stuck with a gorgeous landscape right below a bland blue or gray sky. But what do we say to the drab skies of nature? Not today, because in this affinity photo tutorial, we are going to be learning all about how to replace skies and look at just how much changing out of sky can affect the overall mood of a photo. I will be covering all the basics to replacing a sky in Affinity Photo, whether you want to add some clouds, incorporate color, or do a full-blown background swap. So I'm Abby Esparza with Envato Touch Plus, and let's jump right into Affinity Photo. But first, let me tell you where all the images we'll be using today can be found, so you can follow right alongside me. EnvatoElements.com is my go-to place for stock photos, fonts, and graphics for both image and video editing. You can check out all the links in the video description below. So first, let's start with the quickest way to change out a sky which is going to be adding clouds. This method will work best for shots where the sky is just a little too flat and could use some detail. In this example, we will be adding a bit of a twist to our clouds, but this technique is the same, whether it's a cloudy blue sky or a straight up twister. Here we have a photo of a woman seemingly in awe of a pretty lackluster sky. Let's give her something to look at by dragging and dropping this strange stormy sky stock image onto the canvas. The first thing you will want to do is make sure the horizon line of each photo matches up reasonably close. You can temporarily bring down the opacity of the storm clouds if needed to line everything up. Next, add a layer mask to the storm clouds and with a big ol' fluffy brush, mask out the bottom half of the cloud image. As both photos have a gray hue to them, they will blend beautifully with each other. With this method, I suggest choosing a sky that is similar in tone to the original image to help you cut down on any additional color correction. But we are going to finish off blending the two images by adjusting the color, brightness, and contrast of both the clouds and the original image if needed. Here, I darkened and upped the contrast of both the base image and clouds, while also desaturating the base image using a black and white gradient map. And committed to the storm of the century vibe by adding in both green and blue hues to the image with a color balance and a S-curve curves layer. It's more likely that you won't need to do near as much color correction as I did with this image. As seen here, the same image but a less dramatic sky. Less drama means less editing, but I do love drama. Next up, I'm going to ramp it up a notch by adding a substantially more dramatic sky mixed with a reflective surface. Not only do I want to add more color, but I also need more sky in general. So let's crop our image to increase the sky and I'll opt for less land so we have a good ratio of sky, water, and earth. Next, I'm going to drop in my sky replacement. This sky has just the soft, gorgeous colors that I'm looking for. Once again, line up those horizons. Add a layer mask, just like we did with the last sky, only this time we're going to be a bit more precise with our masking. I'm going to use a soft brush, but it's much smaller. I am blending the horizon line almost seamlessly with the new sky. Now go ahead and duplicate the sky image, delete the layer mask, and set the layer to overlay. From here, I'm going to reconstruct the subtle reflection of the sky onto the water. Bring down the layer opacity to 50% or lower. We don't want things looking too harsh. Then go ahead and add a new layer mask to the sky. Masking out all but the top one fourth of the water. Then I'm going to repeat that same step, only this time setting the layer to soft light and masking out the edges of the water touching the land. We have essentially made a gradient of solid sky 
to a sky set to overlay as we want the reflection to not only be brighter towards the horizon, but a bit more robust. And then to a sky set to soft light to help ease everything into eventually fading to nothing. Let's finish this beautiful beach day off by bringing the stark blue of the sky into both the water and land using a simple color balance layer. The main takeaway here is the use of blend modes to create accurate lighting and color as well as a smooth transition from sky to water or land. This is a great way to bring the colors of the sky into your environment. But now with the basics covered, we are on to the really fun stuff, compositing. When quick blending and layer mode magic won't do the trick, you may have to remove one sky altogether to place the new sky. This is also the ideal solution if you're going for something more stylistic, surreal, or fantasy inspired. For this image, I want to go for an almost otherworldly feel with a mountain range and star filled sky. Just like the last image, I want there to be a bit more sky than before, so I cropped the canvas accordingly. The sky I will be compositing in had to be elongated to fit the scene. I did this using a mixture of the patch and clone brush tool. To learn all about these tools, check out my Remove Any Object in Affinity Photo video. I'll link it for you in the description below. I'm going to go ahead and place my sky behind the mountains. You'll want to extract the original sky from the image. The best results would come from masking out the sky mostly by hand using just a simple brush and mask combo. However, use your preferred method for extraction, whatever you are most comfortable and confident using. For a quick extract job, however, I like relying on the refined mask tool to do most of the heavy lifting. Use the flood select tool to create a selection and mask of the sky. And then clicking on the mask, right click refine mask to refine and smooth the mask out. You can also use the select grow shrink function to get rid of any pesky unwanted edges real fast. This is an excellent method to use when your image will be more of a backdrop as opposed to the main focus. Or maybe you need to mock something up real quick. Otherwise, zoom in nice and close and mask that bad boy out by hand. But next up, let's lay down our shadow and highlights. The bulk of the highlight layers will be done on layers set to screen. But you can also play with other layer modes like color dodge, soft light, or overlay. The curves layer is also a great tool to use for creating or enhancing highlights. I'm going to create a new layer, set to screen, and paint in some ambient light focused on the horizon line. Keep the brush very large with a low flow rate so you can build up the color slowly. You want this to be a pretty sheer sheet of light. Color pick a color from the new sky, in my case pale yellow and orange colors. Repeat the step on a layer clipped inside of your landscape to help connect and blend the two images. The lighting on this layer will be more focused if you have a rising sun or any bright light source as I do. Uh, every landscape, however, will be different, and every sky a different time of day. If you are unsure how you should paint in your lighting, look up some references of a similar environment to get a better idea. For shadows, I recommend the use of layers set to multiply, and the brightness, contrast, and curve adjustment layers as well. I'll start with the brightness, contrast adjustment layer clipped into the mountains to darken everything as well as lower their contrast, as shaded areas will usually be less contrasted compared to lit areas. Next, go in and mask out all the areas where the light source would be hitting, in this case, the sun. Use the original lighting to kind of help guide you, and keep in mind that you may be able to skip this step if you don't have any intense light source like I do.
And as I mentioned, you can also paint in shadows just using a brush on a layer set to multiply. When painting shadows, avoid using black. I know that sounds a bit odd, but shadows are rarely ever flat black. Instead, use a darker, desaturated version of the color you are painting on. For instance, I could use dark brown on these mountains. You can also use the tone of colors in the environment or try playing with contrast colors. Blue is an excellent color to choose in this particular scene. Along with maybe adding more blue into the darker parts of the mountain using a layer set to color. Blue and orange are contrast colors so they pair very nicely together. Also, one of my best friends when it comes to compositing landscapes is the layer blend options. Here, you can tell a layer how much it should show up on light or dark areas. I don't want the shadows to cover up and darken the highlights of the image beneath. So I can drag this point here on the right to control the range of light. The further I pull, the less it will show on the lighter areas of the image beneath. You can further refine this by adding and adjusting more points to the curve. You can also use this to pinpoint highlights, color. It's one of my favorite tools and is best learned by simply playing with it. It's really one of those tools that are harder to explain than it is to use. And finally, it always helps to add a few adjustment layers over top everything to tie it all together. Here, I added an S-curve for some added contrast, along with bringing up the blues and the reds in the shadows. I then created two color adjustment layers, one to add blue to the outer edges of the image, and one to bring in more oranges into the innermost area of the image. And there you have it! While sometimes adding in a few fluffy white clouds will do just the trick, don't be afraid to try changing up the whole mood of a photo by switching from a bright blue sky to a set of ominous clouds rolling in off in the distance, or create an entirely new alien atmosphere full of stars and planets. Every photo has a story to tell, and you can change up the whole narrative just by choosing one sky over another. Turns out the sky is not the limit after all. So if you like this video and would like to see more, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe if you aren't already, and don't forget to click the little bell icon to be notified of any new and inspiring videos. And if you are looking to learn even more, why not check out some of the other excellent tutorials that Envato Touch Plus has to offer. I'm Abby Esparza, see you next time.